Okay, let's try this. Um, so using the free body diagram here, we have to use the equilibrium. We have to use the three states of equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the X, sum of the forces in the Y, and the sum of the torques. So uh, sum of the forces in the X direction, that's left and right. And the only vectors that we've drawn here, left and right, are one is the wall, and the other one is the friction. So the force of the wall has to equal the force of friction. I'm just going to leave that alone. That's good enough for now. We'll go do the sum of the forces in the Y now, up and down. And up and down, we have the normal force up and the, m the force of gravity of the ladder down and the force of gravity of Calvin down. So the normal force has to equal force of gravity of the ladder plus the force of gravity of Calvin. Okay, let's just expand this a little bit because we have a lot of those numbers. So the, the normal force is going to equal force of gravity of the ladder the ladder's mass is 10 kilograms and 9.8 newtons per kilogram plus force of gravity of Calvin. Calvin weighs 40 kilograms and 9.8 newtons per kilogram gravitational field strength. So when we multiply that all out we get the normal force is equal to 490 newtons. Okay, so we've now done the sum of the forces in the X and the sum of the forces in the wall, uh, in, in the Y, in the X, in the Y, and if we've done the X, we have the wall, and we could expand this to be mu times the normal force and get a little bit more definition there, but I'm going to leave that to later. I'm going to swing on over now to our last state. The sum of the torques is equal to zero. At this point, we ignore the red forces. Why? Because they go through the pivot point. So, but that, why, did, why do we ignore it if it goes through the pivot point? Because we have this formula that I'll do over here at the top here. The torque is equal to the force, and these are vectors, and it's actually a cross product. And when we cross product them out, we get, not the cosine, and where did the, my writing go? Okay, let's not write it there. I'll write it here. Torque is equal to the force times the distance, and it's a cross product, and then you get the sine of the angle between the force and the distance. That, that's the displacement vector from the pivot point to where the force is touching or crossing, and there we have the force vector. So that's the, that's the torque. And the, the sum of the torques have to be zero. So that's why, number one, we don't use the normal force or the frictional force because the distance to the pivot point is zero. So the torques equal zero. So the, the torques counterclockwise have to equal the torques that are trying to spin it clockwise. The counterclockwise ones are the two forces of gravity pulling down. So that is the torque of the ladder plus the torque of Calvin has to equal the torque of the wall trying to spin it clockwise. Those are the three, ve the three forces, each causing three different torques. So now we have to write out what those torques are. Okay, so the torque of the ladder is force times distance times the sine of the angle. So the force is 10 times 9.8. So the force is 98 newtons times the distance away, which is 2.5 meters, times the sine of the angle that we've drawn here, which is 25. 
That's the torque caused by the ladder. The torque caused by Calvin, he weighs uh, 392 newtons. That's 40 times 9.8. His distance away is the two and a half plus the one, so it's three and a half meters away from the pivot point times the sine of the angle. And that has to equal the torque of the wall. The force of the wall, the distance away, five meters, and the sine of the angle, sine 65. One long equation, only one unknown. So let's just solve that. So let's do it in parts because it's always good to write down your number. So in case you have to make a quick change, you can change part of it. 98 times 2.5 times sine 25. Sine 25. 20. 25. Okay, so that's 103.54. Newton meters. I'm going to store that. So I get store alpha A, put it in my A. Now I'm going to do this number uh, 392 times 3.5 times the sine of 25. That's 579.83. I'm going to store that. Store that alpha B. Okay, and then we have equals F wall times those two things. So uh, 5 times the sine of 65. So that equals 4.5315. And that unit actually is just meters. Okay, so let's figure out what F wall is. F wall is what I stored in A plus what I stored in B divided by the answer here. So, do I just go alpha A? I think so. A plus what I stored in B divided by that answer that I had here, the 4.53 divided by answer. Yeah. 150.8. Yeah. Okay. So we have this answer, the normal force, and we're going to use that in a second. That's why I'm highlighting it. We're going to use this formula. That's why I'm highlighting it. That's the sum of the, the resultant of what we did at the sum of the x's. And that formula right here is what we resulted down of after doing the sum of the y's. And this is our answer to our question so far. What is the force from the wall? We've got it, 150.8 newtons. We're now asked to figure out what is the coefficient of friction. Okay, so hide the calculator for a second. Let's go to blue this time. Mu is the coefficient of friction. Okay, and it comes from the formula the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. 
Oh, don't lean on the keyboard as I'm doing it. Normal force. There's our dynamics formula for force of friction. Is mu times n. So mu is equal to the uh, force of friction over the normal force. And the force of friction is just the wall force. So it's 150.8. Newtons, and the normal force is 490, the other thing that I've highlighted in yellow up there. So pull that up, 150 divided by the 490. So our coefficient of friction is 0 And that's our coefficient of friction. That's mu. OK, so it, that is the required coefficient of friction at the ground so that the ladder does not slide out. Any more than that, it's still fine. Any less than that, the ladder's going to slide out. Any questions? No questions?